The Fed is raising rates, and many believe that it's something we need to do to have the ability to address future downturns in the economy by lowering them. But nobody talks about the balance sheet in this respect. Are Fed uh, officials lowering the balance sheet level just to be able to reload, to use this as an active tool forevermore? Your thoughts? I, I don't think that is the primary consideration, but I do think that there's a market reaction that supports that. I think the Fed does want to get the balance sheet down to some level that they feel comfortable with kind of from a historical basis. There's no question that when the next recession rolls around, the Fed is going to have to do more QE. But I don't think yet the tail is wagging the dog. And I think you heard Powell make a similar comment earlier. Now we get the minutes to the December meeting tomorrow. Is there anything in the minutes that you may be looking for to give us clues as to how the Fed may deal with the next several quarters with regard to ongoing normalization? Well, as you mentioned, I think balance sheet is a key topic that will probably get a little more discussion around. You had an early version of that in November. I don't know if they'll reach any firm conclusions. What we saw back in November is they like the idea of a big balance sheet from the standpoint of managing bank reserves. But they don't really like the idea of a big balance sheet for all of the side effects it has. And so I think they're still debating. I don't think we'll get any clear resolution, but that's certainly one thing to look for. All right, with regard to the yield curve, uh, today's an interesting day. You know, we're getting more flattening. Rates move lower, we seem to get flattening. Rates move higher, we seem to get flattening. Three right. months to 10 years at 24, two year to 10s at 13. Is there any color you can give us, Michael, on how investors should be dealing with these ever flattening, getting closer to inverted curves? Yeah, I think the, the flattening that's happened more recently is because you had the market for a time pricing in Fed rate cuts. And we priced that out today. Uh, I think it's going to be a really high hurdle to get the Fed to cut anytime soon. So I think the market and the Fed on the, on the short end are coming kind of back together. But your point is well taken. One of the best indicators in the markets of when the economy is going to roll over has historically been the yield curve. And we're certainly getting into ranges now where market participants and probably Fed officials are getting a little more nervous. There's an active debate about whether the balance sheet is maybe forcing the yield curve flatter than it otherwise would be. Uh, and I think there's probably something to that. Uh, but as we get closer to a flatter yield curve, I think you're going to hear more caution out of Fed officials, quite frankly. All right. And finally, we begin a, 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 a set of auctions in threes, tens and thirties today, Wednesday and Thursday, 78 billion. My final question to you is with rates moving down and some big institutions saying the top is in on interest rates. What about debt deficits and supply? Do they still matter? Your final thought. I, I don't think they're going to matter for a while, quite frankly. The, the classic example here is the Fed being, or the Fed, the U.S. being the cleanest shirt in the dirty laundry pile, right? I think there are other countries that are in worse shape. I think treasuries are going to remain kind of the, the, uh, the lifeline, the bloodline of global financial markets. So at some point, they probably will matter. I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon.